My name is Jeffrey Smith. I'm the Executive Director of the Institute for Responsible Technology. I'm the author of the book Seeds of Deception and Genetic Roulette and my latest film, Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives. It was, happened to win Movie of the Year and Transformational Film of the Year in 2012. Uh, who, where'd you get that award from? Uh, Solari Report and Aware Guide. And you just gave a talk here in Chimicum High School. Yes, I did. Uh, can you kind of give us an idea of uh, what the talk was about? Well, Washington State is a key state right now in history. Uh, it could be the first state to pass a la required labeling of genetically engineered foods. Um, and so we talked about the dangers of genetically engineered foods, the myths and the lies that have been propagated by the biotech industry, and how they have engineered a disinformation campaign to try and convince the people of Washington that this simple labeling bill will cost them money, and it won't. It's that it uh, has e horrible exemptions, and it doesn't. That it's going to be bad for business, and it's not. And that it's um, basically poorly written, and it's not. Uh, we talked about the health dangers of GMOs, how the FDA scientists had warned against GMOs that they might create allergies, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems, uh, but were ignored by the person in charge of policy, the former attorney to biotech giant Monsanto, Michael Taylor. And he was in charge of policy at the FDA. The policy ignored the scientists, denied the existence of their concerns, saying that the agency is not aware of any information showing that GMOs are different. And on that basis, no testing was necessary, and no labeling was necessary. And that was a lie, because it, the documents made public from a lawsuit showed that the overwhelming consensus by the scientists working at the agency was exactly the opposite. Then Taylor worked at the USDA, then he became Monsanto's chief lobbyist and, and vice president, now he's back at the FDA as the US food czar in the Obama administration. We talked about how the American Academy of Environmental Medicine evaluated the animal feeding studies on GMOs and found um, evidence of gastrointestinal disorders, immune system problems, reproductive problems, how thousands of doctors are prescribing non-GMO diets and finding these same disorders go away often with people when they get off of GMOs, how livestock when taken off of GMOs also have these disorders go away how these disorders are on the rise in the U.S. population since GMOs were introduced, and how the toxins associated with GMOs are predisposed to creating these same disorders and diseases. In fact, many people in the audience said that when they removed GMOs from their diet, they found improvements in gastrointestinal problems, allergies, asthma, autoimmune disease, reproductive disorders, cancer, gallbladder issues, etc., etc., uh, also skin problems, uh, fatigue, weight problems. Now, what's different about these than other audiences? Nothing. I've asked close to 100 audiences to tell me what's gotten better in those who've removed GMOs. It's the same list every night. It was the same list in Bellingham. It was the same list in Monroe. And I'm going to go to Federal Way, and it'll probably be the same list there, too. Talk to uh, mothers with children that have to uh, rely on formula. They can't breastfeed. Formula has got, what, 60% soy and corn in it. How can the companies get away with something like that? So children are most at risk from the potential dangers of GMOs. Their blood-brain barrier is not fully developed. They react more to toxins. They're more allergenic. They can have more reactions to small amounts of allergens. Um, they, they eat more per their size because they're very fast growing. Uh, and we see a whole generation now of all sorts of sick kids. And a lot of pediatricians that I talk to think that GMOs are a major reason. And they take GMOs out of the diet of these kids. And we've seen parents of autistic kids say that their, their autistic children improve. We've had some mother told me in, in MIT that her six and a half year old was violent and out of control. They wanted to kick him out of school. She saw the film Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives, stopped eating GMOs, stopped feeding GMOs. She had a new child within a month and he, all the problems disappeared. So we hear that over and over again. And we also point out that unfortunately the infant formula, of course breastfeeding according to pediatricians, is far, far superior than formula. But for those that can't breastfeed or have to supplement, 
the issue is, can they get organic formula? Because the major formulas that are out there use um, genetically engineered corn, corn syrup solids. Some use soy base. Some use the, use the milk from cows treated with genetically engineered bovine growth hormone, which can increase the IGF-1 in the milk, which is linked to cancer, so much so that we were told by a former Monsanto scientist that three of his colleagues found so much of this cancer-promoting hormone in the milk that the three Monsanto scientists that sold the bovine growth hormone refused to drink milk thereafter unless it was organic. One actually bought his own cow. So um, it's pr particularly important for infants to be uh, protected from the dangers or potential dangers of GMOs. And so I encourage uh, parents to spend the extra amount for organic formula or to go on site and find out how to produce their own formula rather than to use the genetically engineered if they can. And look at the, you know, people have to make their own decision. I'm not giving medical advice and this is not to, to replace the advice of a doctor. But from someone who knows the dangers of GMOs, I can say this, I wouldn't want to give it to children.